Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. I hope you enjoyed our Blade Show week coverage over the last week, uh, week and a bit. We bled over into Monday and Tuesday just a little bit, but we had a good time interviewing all of the great knife makers out there, even though we couldn't see them in person in Atlanta. If you haven't checked those out, we'll make sure to leave a link in the description where you can see the whole playlist. Uh, but we had a lot of fun, but right now it's time to take a look at the coolest knives that have hit our shelves in the last couple of weeks. I brought together a selection of them right here. Let's check them out. So we're going to start with slip joints and multi-tools this week. Uh, and the reason for that, usually I, I leave these for a little uh, later in the video, but I've got a really exciting one here. It may look unassuming, but this is the new MKM Malga 6. And for everyone out there who's always wanted a quote-unquote Swiss Army knife, this is not Swiss Army, uh, but whoever has wanted a Swiss Army knife with better steel, MKM he is here to answer the call because this knife has an M390 blade. Really cool to see that on a knife like this. Uh, the price obviously is gonna be more than the, uh, the Victorinox Swiss Army knives out there, um, but pretty reasonably priced, I would say, considering everything you do get, this comes in at just over, or just under 110 right now. So MKM, if you don't know, stands for Maniago Knife Makers. Uh, we got to talk to them last week during our Blade Show Week interviews where they showed off this knife, um, but it is a uh, sort of a consortium of uh, assorted Italian knife makers. This particular one, was made by Mercury for the MKM label. Blade steel, as I said, was M390. You've got a very conventional spear point shape here, really similar to the Victorinox shapes, actually. Full flat grind, stonewashed finish, which is really nice. Scratches are gonna blend into that quite nicely. Cutting profile is very good, and tip to scale, the blade length is just under three inches, and non-locking, of course. So this is a good knife to take just about anywhere. It's compliant in a lot of different places. You do have a few other tools as well. Obviously they're not M390, but they don't need to be. They're not holding an edge. You've got your standard pairing here of can opener on one side, bottle opener on the other with the screwdriver there on the front. And if you're not uh, a fan of Victorinox's bottle openers these days, this is kind of an older style here that you might prefer. We've also got an awl on the back and it kind of gave you some tools on this so it would make it a good companion um, for like cocktails or, uh, or, or not cocktails, a picnic, that sort of thing. You've got your, uh, your bottle opener, uh, sorry, corkscrew there, opens a bottle of wine. Um, great to take along on a picnic, certainly, if you're legal of legal age, of course. And got a little cocktail fork too, which is kind of neat. All those are fine and good, and we may be seeing some uh, other versions of these in the future if the, uh, the Model 6 does well. Um, it's, the 6 is named for the number of tools you've got on here. But I'd say the two headline things with this knife one is the blade and the two, or the second is the scales. We've got green canvas micarta here. We've also got natural micarta, but even cooler than just that material, these are actually removable. You could take these scales off, do something custom with, you, with them if you'd like. Um, you're not gonna be able to take the whole knife apart like that. The, uh, the pivots are actually pinned in traditional slip joint uh, fashion. Uh, so those screws are only going to remove the scales, but that's going to be really cool to, like I said, do a custom project, do some customizing on this if you want. Just a very neat uh, kind of nod to the DIYers and the modders out there. Now, as far as carrying this goes, uh, there's no pocket clip and there's no pocket sheath included, but there is a new pocket sheath that MKM just released, comes in about 25 bucks. Now, you've probably seen this on a couple other uh, of their knives, including like, I think the Farah comes with this. Um, but what's really cool about it is it's essentially a pocket slip, but it's a little bit more than just a pocket slip. So I'll throw that in there. You've got a belt loop here on the back, but it's actually magnetic, which is really cool. You can carry it in a few different ways. You could use it as a belt loop, I suppose, but it's not really the way I would recommend it. What's nice about this is you can slide this pocket slip into your pocket and this can swing around uh, the hem of your pocket and hold magnetically right there. Keeps the knife from uh, falling down into the bottom of your pocket, making it hard to get to. And it's just really classy. And it works for more than just uh, knives like this uh, Malga 6 right here. It's going to be a great addition to any standard slip joint. You know, the length of this knife right here is uh, just a little bit under four inches. And, and as you could see, it kind of filled up the space there pretty nicely. Might have a little bit more wiggle room up there if you have something just a little bit larger. All right, next up, another multi-tool, and this is just a line extension to the new Free K2 from Leatherman. New colors available. We've got blue, green, and red. Uh, special price right now on these is just under 64 bucks. We've got these on sale at the moment, uh, but it's the same great Free you, you know and love uh, from before, Free K2, I should say. 
Got a sheep's foot style blade here, about 3.3 inches, 420 HC steel. Comes with a hollow grind. It's gonna be pretty easy to keep a pretty keen edge on that. And of course, it's a great utility shape. We got one hand opening, thanks to the, the cutout right there. And you've got this nice lock. You lift up on this bar before, and then you can close the blade. And I really like the implementation here. It has the advantage of being ambidextrous. It's gonna work very easily in left or right hands. And your blade, or sorry, your fingers stay out of the path of the blade when closing. It's always something I definitely look for and appreciate in the knives I like to carry. But it's more than just a pocket knife. You've actually got uh, some multi-tool elements here at the back. Simply push on the back end right there with your thumb, and then that's gonna reveal the three tools you have there. Of course, you've got your flathead screwdriver slash mini pry bar. You've got a nice awl here, which can be sharpened quite nicely. Phillips screwdriver, and of course a bottle opener because no good multi-tool will be worth its salt without one. And each one of those locks open as well with a very similar system to the blade itself. Got a reversible deep carry pocket clip, holds it pretty deep. And they've even managed to keep the weight fairly reasonable on this knife. This is less than five ounces, so it's not a feather weight, but it's definitely not a pocket anchor. You've got aluminum handle scales there, opens up really easily, and it even feels decently comfortable in the hand. The edges of the spine are even chamfered over, so it's nice and comfortable when you're choking up. Overall, just a really well executed piece, and if you want a few extra tools, but you want the convenience of a one-hand opener and you don't want to carry an extra multi-tool with you, this would definitely be a very good option. All right, back to slip joints. We've got our next batch of our exclusive G-Slip from Real Steel. This is an Ostop Hell design, and it comes in at 6360 right now. Blade's about three and a half inches, VG10, nice full flat grind. We've got a really acute and narrow blade shape here that's gonna make it pretty agile in most day-to-day -day uses. Nice comfortable spine here. And of course the exclusive uh, natural micarta handle scales that you can only get on this knife here from us. Got your deep carry pocket clip as well. Nice wire design, similar to the Spyderco, so it looks nice and unobtrusive from the outside. Tiny little uh, hidden lanyard point there. And some really nice walk and talk. Not a half stop on these. They give you sort of a, uh, a one-thirds, two-thirds stop here, but it closes up quite nicely. If you want something a little fancier in terms of your slip joints, I've got a hinderer here. And yes, this is one of the hinderer XM18 slip joints, and it's the latest entry uh, in his rolling vintage series where he's going through uh, several of his models and doing this kind of old-school version of them. You've got walnut handle scales. I believe it's walnut. Yep, smooth walnut wood scales. 01 tool steel here with a nice parkerized finish rather than sort of a, uh, a modern particle steel that a lot of his knives come with. Blade length on this sits right at the three inch mark as well. So again, it's a good length for taking all over the place. Feels nice and comfy in the hand. The blade kind of angles down a little bit. It's just gonna make a great EDC shape. It works well as a flipper, works well as the slip joint as well. But it's still a one, one hand opening slip joint. I don't actually have it on here, but there's a, uh, included in the box, there's a small thumb disc, which you can actually position wherever you like along this track at the back of the blade here. So whatever leverage, whatever spot works best for you in terms of leverage for opening it one-handed, you can have it right where you want it to be. Now, one thing to note about the action is there is no kind of half stop on this. And the reason for that is, even though I usually tend to prefer one, for a one-hand opening slip joint, that can often be a hindrance when you're going to kind of thumb open the blade. So they, they left that out in this case, but there's still a good amount of retention from that back spring. We've also got that pocket clip here on the back that's uh, tip up or tip down, where, whichever way you prefer in that regard. I think my favorite part about this knife overall, just you know, apart from it just being really cool, is the blade stock is nice and thin. You can see there, this is not a big, thick, tactical knife type of blade like some of the uh, XM18 flippers have. Instead, it's nice and surgical. You got a nice high flat grind, just a really good shape for everyday slicing. As far as price, this comes in at 315 right now, all made right here in America. If you want something a little cheaper and you still like that vintage vibe, but you'd rather have a lock, I've got a new cold steel for you now. It's the Ranch Boss 2. Comes in at just under 40 bucks. And this is a slip joint, but it is a slip joint that also has a liner lock. You can see that right here in the cutout on the bolster. Now, it is a little bit tricky to close one-handed, I found, just because you do face the, uh, the resistance of that slip joint back spring. So you have the lock, but I would still definitely recommend closing this two-handed. Closed up, you can see it's fairly substantial. The blade on this is about four inches long, so they do include a nice leather belt 
sheath for you, snap shut here with a simple, uh, or sorry, simple vertical uh, belt carry option on the back. But I'll open up that blade again. As I mentioned, about four inches long, we've got SK5 carbon steel. So more of a vintage inspired flavor rather than uh, like a modern super steel, like some of the older ranch bosses I think had uh, S35 on them, I think, uh, but those were a lot more expensive too. Um, that vintage vibe kind of carries through to the handles. You've got this vintage or vintage inspired again. It's not actual bone, but this faux saw cut bone uh, handles on both sides. Kind of reminds me of some of the uh, the Schrade old timer knives that you see. I think it feels fairly solid, especially again when you consider the price of forty bucks. It's a great everyday knife for uh, folks that like a more vintage inspired design. You've got that full flat grind on the blade. It's going to cut really nicely. The security of that liner lock. What's not to love at that $40 price point? All right, now for something on the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got something completely modern here from ProTech. This is the 2020 release of the TR3, which is the Tactical Response 3, coming in right now at 420 bucks. These are serialized. As you can see here, this is number 40 out of 100, so these are not, uh, not gonna be super plentiful. Um, I'm showing it on the video when, we're, when we are recording this, and hopefully we'll still have some in stock when the video goes live. If not, I'm sorry, uh, but I still wanted to show it to you because it was just really cool. Aluminum handles here, you've got kind of this fish scale milling pattern going on. Adds a little bit of grip, but it's not super grabby. It's just going to give you a little bit more surface area for your hands to grab onto. I don't think it's going to raise any kind of hot spot if you're actually using the knife. Blade is 154 cm, about 3 and 3 eighths of an inch. We've got a black DLC coating and the, pol the grinds on the blade have this really high polish to them, almost a mirror finish, or it would be if it were, if it were the steel. It looks really smooth and then it contrasts with sort of the heavier grain pattern on the flats of the blade itself. As you can see, we've also got compound grinds going on. This is, these are compound hollow grinds. It's not hollow and flat. You've just got two different radiuses going on. And then of course, a nice swedge here. Penetration on this is gonna be really excellent. And of course, it's a ProTech automatic. So the action in terms of side opening autos is going to be absolutely fantastic. Very nice indeed. Secondary safety there works when it's uh, closed or opened. You can keep that button from pressing and that button is the same thing that fires it as it is uh, unlocks the blade as well. Very cool piece. So speaking of cool limited edition pieces, we've got a new design here from CRKT. This is the Heron, designed by Duhara, coming in at 250 right now. Now you may be thinking that's a bit high for most of the CRKTs you're used to, and that's because this is actually made in Italy by Lion Steel, who makes some of the best knives in the world, and you're going to pay a premium for that as well. So considering that, 250 on this is not actually all that bad. We've got an M390 blade coming in about 3.4 inches. Really cool shape here going on. Not so much a, uh, an everyday user, certainly, uh, because of that cutout there in the middle. This is definitely a display piece, I think, a collector's item. Single-edged, even though you've got a, uh, a ground bevel here at the back, you don't actually have a sharpened edge back there. Handles are titanium, and you can see you've got this whole skeletonized structure going on. Nice pocket clip here on the back with some standoffs to hold it. Liner lock on this knife is kind of interesting. As you can see also, we've got some of those uh, kind of signature touches you see from Lion Steel quite often. You've got some crowning or crowned edges on the liners themselves, which is kind of neat looking. And then IKBS bearings in the pivot, so the flipping action is quite good. Um, it would serve some practical purposes, I would say, uh, if you're using just the tip uh, to open your packages and that sort of thing where this uh, cutout's not going to get in the way. You know, things might get hung up on there if you're doing some heavier cutting. But this could be a cigar cutter if you have some, uh, some narrow, narrow tipped cigars back there. They probably didn't intend it to be that, but it's kind of cool and we noticed it. So, you know, there you go. Another nice little feature is this actually comes with a, uh, a leather wrap for the knife. It has a stitched pocket here. And then you simply, uh, let me see if I do this right, sorry. Fold things up here and you can tie it off for nice stowage if you want to carry it that way. Now, if you want to make sure you're going to have a better, t easier time using your fancier knife, We've got some new offerings now from Chris Reeve. We've got some unique graphic versions of their new Sabenza 31. So I'm really happy I'm, I'm actually getting to get my hands on one and show it to you right now. Uh, we've got a couple large and a couple small with a bunch of different uh, graphic versions on them. This particular one comes in at 600 and this is the large 31. As far as the improvements they've made on the, uh, this new generation of their classic knife, uh, you've still got a nice 3.6 inch blade or thereabouts with S35 VN steel, nice acute hollow grind. 
It's still a titanium frame locking knife, uh, but as you can see, they've uh, simplified things a little bit here on the handle. Although that's funny to say on this, uh, this custom graphic version. Uh, but there's no hole here on the front like there used to be. That was a machining point. Uh, they've refined their construction method so they don't have to have that anymore. And they've also tweaked the lock bar itself. Uh, the interface with the blade, even though uh, there's a lot of folks out there that have gone to a steel interface, they're actually using a ceramic ball interface. The same thing you see on their Incosi model. And another kind of improvement that they lifted from the Incosi, they've also angled the pocket clip so that it no longer rests on the lock bar itself. Now, I never really had a problem with that uh, myself on the previous generation 21s, uh, but some folks found that that could kind of impact the, uh, the operability of the lock bar just a little bit. So to kind of satisfy that, they've just tweaked the angle there just a little bit. Basically, it's still the same great Sabenza it's always been. It's just kind of evolved into its latest form. And it's still, in, for my money, and I have put my money down on a Sabenza, a couple Sabenzas myself, it's still one of the best knife purchases I think you can make. If, however, your tastes run more towards the modern high-end flippers, I've got some new versions of the Michael Zeba S5 Pro. This is, of course, a collaboration, actually, between Michael Zeba and Jason Knight. This one comes in at 545 right now, and it's got everything you want in a modern high-end titanium frame lock flipper. Got a super steel blade, M390, three and a half inches long, and a really cool uh, etched finish here at the top. It's not Damascus. These, this is just kind of laser etching here at the top to give it a unique vibe. And of course, you got that fuller along there as well to also kind of spice things up a little bit. The handle itself is titanium, and what I've always liked about this design is the contouring that you get here. You, as you can see, it's almost like a fixed blade in the way they've got the swells situated on this handle. They do a good job of rounding over all the corners. It's nice and silky feeling in the hand, and it's even not that heavy. They've actually uh, gone in and milled out some pretty deep pockets on the inside of the knife to keep the weight down and the balance a little more appropriate. You've got your milled pocket clip here on the right side, tip up carry, lock bar, and of course, a uh, steel lock bar insert there. And no lanyard hole, but you do have a little post here that's protected by these two standoffs, these two uh, uh, yeah, barrel spacers right here. So you could tie a lanyard off right there, and you're not going to have to worry about the edge hitting that and maybe slicing it loose. But that way you can accessorize how you want. Uh, some folks like that because it makes it a little easier to pull out of a pocket. So you can access the knife and the action. It's great. Flip it open, get your cutting done. This is another one of those knives, just like the Sabenza, it's at the top of its game and is a real good place to put your money. But those are definitely expensive places to put your money. So if you need something a little more affordable, I've got a new design here from Alliance Designs and Ray Laconico. This is his OG Jasmine coming in at 125. Now the shape of this may look a little bit familiar, uh, and that's because the Jasmine model, Ray Laconico's custom Jasmine, was also used as the basis for Kaiser's Gemini knife, which has been available for some time now. But this one right here comes together at a really nice price point for what you're getting. It only, it's only $125 for this version I've got in my hands right here, and for that you're getting an M390 blade. Now there are higher end versions of this available as well. Uh, they're not strictly new, these are the new versions here. Uh, those higher end versions come with titanium handles and RWL34 steel. Uh, but this one right here is really, I think, a performance bargain. Like I said, M390 steel, you've got simpler handle scale construction here. We've got a liner lock with G10 scales over top. This particular one is the Jade G10, but we've also got orange and black if you prefer something uh, you know, a little more uh, subtle or a little more traditional with that black finish. Now these aren't flipper knives, but the action is still very good. You've still got ball bearings in the pivot, so the blade pops open really nicely. And in terms of the blade shape itself, I don't really think it gets much better than this. Got that drop point shape, it's a little bit over three inches, full flat grind, so your slicing is gonna be pretty good. Now they haven't gone super thin on the blade stock, they've kept it a little bit thicker. Uh, sits somewhere in between 1 8 and 5 30 seconds, uh, just based on my eyes here. Um, so you still get a good amount of, get it, bleh, sorry, you still get a good amount of rigidity here at the spine, but because the actual shape is such a wide profile and you've got that full flat grind, it counteracts that a little bit, so you're still gonna be able to slice pretty well. Now, if you like this overall shape, but you wish it had a flipper, make sure you check out those Kaiser Gemini versions of this knife. Uh, you know, almost identical profile overall, but of course you have that flipper option. But that jade coloration is, is a nice material to get that translucent effect. I've got another knife here that I'll show you in a second. Uh, but one other cool thing about this jade, especially uh, if you like to use uh, RIT dye to dye your knife scales, this makes a great candidate. 
And so, of course, you've got the sky is the limit in terms of the colors you could put on this knife. But as far as the next Jade knife, I've actually got an OTF Microtech here. This is one of these signature series Troodon models. And the cool thing about this on an automatic like this is you can actually sort of see the inner workings of the knife through that translucent material, which is just really cool. Price on this one is $474. You've got that double-edged blade with M390 in this particular case. And of course, it's a Microtech, so really nice and satisfying action. And it's not a huge size like some of their bigger uh, combat Troodons. Um, comes in just over three inches on the blade, nice pocketable frame. Of course, you've got your reversible pocket clip here, which is pretty deep carry. And I only say pretty deep carry. It does hide the whole handle, but you do have that glass breaker there on the end. If you want another Microtech with a very different flair here, we've got a new blade option on the Exoset folder. This is the new Tonto blade option. This comes in at 250 right now. Now this was an OTF designed with kind of a dual mission purpose. For one thing, they've designed this for California compliance with the blade coming in under that two inch mark. This uh, is 1.98 according to our specs. And of course, this can double up as a money clip because you've got the broad chassis here, aluminum, and you've got that nice wide pocket clip as well but you've still got that great automatic action. And of course, you've also got the double-edged versions, which we've had for a while. We've got a new double-edged version with serrations on both sides, which have just come in, as well as this new Tonto option right here. Steel on this particular one is Carpenter CTS-204P, um, which if you're unfamiliar is actually, metallurgically, it's pretty much the same stuff as M390, just made in America. So I know there was a few affordable things on the table here, but a lot of the stuff this week has been kind of premium high-end stuff. So I'm gonna end with a nice premium high-end pen. We've got some new side-click pens from Tactile Turn. Uh, this comes in at 99 bucks right now, and this is also made in America. And the thing I've liked about uh, all the Tactile Turn stuff uh, that we've gotten in is they feel incredibly precise. We've got their bolt action models, which have tolerances like I've never felt on any bolt action pen before. And that carries through to this new side, side click release mechanism they've got here. Now to deploy the pen cartridge, and we've got a Pilot G2 Rollerball in here uh, out of the box. Uh, and when I say out of the box, it's actually a nice little uh, metal case here that it comes in, which is pretty cool. But to deploy that, you click the top right there. And to release it, you click this button on the side here, hence the name side click. You know, it feels really satisfying. Um, I think the, the bolt action ones to me feel a little bit more satisfying. That's just my preference. Uh, these are gonna be a little bit easier to use since you just have to push down instead of following the track of the bolt on those models. This particular one's titanium. We've also got copper and brass uh, and maybe even a few other colors. I don't remember uh, specifically. But what I like about these is there's a really fine milled uh, series of rings on this knife. You almost, or knife, on this pen. I'm so used to talking about knives. Uh, you can you can probably pick it up a little bit in the camera, but it is really fine. So again, it's one of those touches that's going to give you a good amount of grip, but it's not going to raise a hot spot if you're doing any kind of long writing sessions. All right, that's all I've got to show you this week. Make sure to let us know what you thought of these knives down there in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on any of these, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to thenifecenter.com. And make sure while you're over there to sign up for our knife rewards program, because if you're going to buy one of these cool knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. I hope you're all staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.